<laughs> well, good morning, everyone. And welcome to Emmanuel United Church of Christ, where we have a passion for God and compassion for all. Just a few brief announcements for this morning. We want to start off by saying happy birthday this week to Gene Lawson, as well as David Shockley. We want to say happy anniversary this week to Tina and Ken Hamlin. And we have a few international holidays we'd like to acknowledge Ooh. today. <laughs> Turns out last Monday was West Indian Day. Tuesday is Grandparents Day. So anyone who's a grandparent or great-grandparent or great-great-grandparent, congratulations. <laughs> now get this. Sunday is European Heritage Day. So anyone who has any European in them gets to celebrate. So basically, this entire week, regardless of where you're from, there is a day to celebrate. Can we get an amen? Amen. 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 Now, I do want to share the news that if you remember one of our beloved members, Doris Carmichael, who attended here for years but moved back home a few years ago, we just found out from her daughter that Dars did pass away in August. Mm. We'll be able to send you some more information later on today. But we certainly want to keep Doris' family in our prayers. Mm. And also, as you know, today is Stump the Pastor Sunday. <laughs> what that means is all week long you have been faithfully submitting scriptures in which you think there's no way anyone could preach on. And what we're going to do right now is have Ruthie come forward. She has all the suggestions that were made. She's going to select it, give it to Tracy, and then she's going to give it to Diane. We're not going to have the words on the screen because we don't have enough time to place it in. But we'll go ahead and see what we will be preaching on today. Ruthie, if you want to shake it up. All right. Go ahead and select. Excellent, and you're going to give it to Tra Tracy as well, right? Wonderful, wonderful. So be prepared. Who knows how the Holy Spirit is going to move. <laughs> but now at this time, we invite you to silence your cell phones. All the stress and all the worries and all the confusion from the week before, now is the time to let go. And allow yourself to be still and to be calm. And to experience the resurrected Christ, no matter if you are here in the sanctuary or in your own home watching us live. And as our musicians usher us into a holy space and into a holy time, our Sunday morning worship now continues. Let us join now in our call to worship. The Lord watches over us when we labor. The Lord loves it when we rest. Give us Sabbath. Jesus knew when it was time to gather with friends and to share a meal. Wherever we break bread, Christ is there. The Holy Spirit freely moves when we get out of our own way. God's creativity never ceases to astound us. You may be seated.
Thank you. Sabbath rest is in many ways an opportunity to realign yourself with God our Creator, but to also realign yourself with your neighbors because you're not busy rushing or producing or competing. You can just be. At this moment, you are now invited, if you're able to and if you feel comfortable enough, to rise and to turn to your neighbors and to extend to them your own sign of Sabbath rest. <laughs> rest and blessings. Happy rest. Happy rest. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then as one of our new traditions, let us turn to our neighbors watching us from home and extend to them a sign of Sabbath rest as well. Amen. Amen. And you all may be seated. And now let us enter into our call to confession. The Lord is with us every step of the way. Let us bring our silent confession into the sacred time, knowing that the Lord listens to our voices. And let us unite as one to say, Jesus heals our hearts, forgives our sins, and walks beside us. We are surrounded by grace and not forgotten. Amen. Dios está aquí. Tan cierto como el aire que respiro Es tan cierto como la mañana se levanta Es tan cierto como que le canto y me puede oír God is here today I start sending a thing and not go and breathe her. I sending out the morning song that rises. I sending when I sing, you hear my soul. I sending when you hear my sing, hear my soul. Good morning. Good morning. It's an experience to get handed the pastor's personal Bible <laughs> and uh, just start paging through it. It's, uh, it's quite a read just in the margins. And I want to thank whomever submitted this for a short and non-complex reading this morning from the book of Psalms, chapter 38, verses 21 and 22. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O my God, do not be far from me. Make haste to help me. Amen. O Lord, my salvation. Amen. Amen. Do not forsake me, O my Lord, and my salvation. Amen. Let us join together in a moment of centering prayer. Blessed and Holy One, we know that you are here with us, and we know that without manuscripts or perfection or the ego-driven need to please, you are able to speak to us and to provide. Allow this to be a moment in which we can feel your presence and be assured that you are constantly by our side. In your son's name we pray and we say, Amen. 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 First, I want to say thank you for everyone who participated in this. This is the third time we're doing Stump the Pastor. The first time, only two scriptures were submitted because I don't know if people really knew what we were doing, but I was also explained that no one wanted to be the person who stumps the pastor. <laughs> I am so thankful that five years later we have a group of people who couldn't wait to stump the pastor because what that really means is that we've done the hard work for you to earn my trust and I've done the work for you to earn mine. So I want to say thank you for that. When I hear this image about God not forsaken and God being our salvation, 
I think about one of the heavy realities as a pastor. More often than not, when I go into public places and people learn who I am and what I do, a lot of times what I end up hearing is stories about how they feel totally abandoned by God and how they feel that God has completely forsaken them. And a lot of times what I really hear is that it's not so much God who's abandoned them, but it's been the church and the people who have symbolized the church, who have done the abandoning. What I'd like to do is to start off with a recent story that maybe illustrates what this image of not being forsaken can look like. As a lot of you know, I'm continuing to develop this amazing relationship with my little brother, Cornelius. And now, after eight years, the roles are starting to switch. And the mentee is starting to become the mentor. And a few days ago, we were at the gym, Prestige Fitness, where he's been working out. And it's so amazing to be in this eclectic crowd of people in Sebring in which you have people from all different backgrounds coming together to work out. Now, I was one of those kids that I was raised at a time in which your gym teacher pushed you, mocked you, insulted you, humiliated you if you did not live up to the standards of what a good athletic boy should look like. So sports has never been easy for me. Theater has been easy. Sports has really been one of the most difficult experiences of my life. So Thursday, we're at the gym, and this guy named James, who's kind of like the big papa of the gym, who brings in that barber sharp energy and mentality, comes in, and he had purchased a weight that is used for your trapezoids. It's like this weird octagonal-shaped thing that you put the weights on and you pull it up and you go like this. So all of a sudden, all these guys start swarming around him while I'm doing my sit-ups, and they all start taking turns. So James goes, and he's lifting it up. Then this guy, John, whose parents are from India, goes, and he starts lifting it. Then Derek, who's the owner of the gym, starts lifting up these weights. Then Cornelius goes to lift up the weights, and it ends up slipping out of his hands. And I saw the most amazing thing take place. All these guys immediately rushed around him, and they did steps that showed encouragement. Someone actually rubbed his back. Someone else said, oh, that's okay. And then the owner said, well, that was just too slippery. What we need to do is either wrap tape around it, take sandpaper and sand it down, or we can get some chalk to put on your hands. So they went and got some chalk, and they put it on Cornelius' hands, and he went right back to lifting. And for anyone who's been raised in that competitive nature of male sports, especially in the 70s and 80s, I was immediately thinking, oh my God, they're going to make fun of him. Oh my God, he's going to be shamed. Oh my God, he's going to be attacked or his ego is going to be bruised. It was the complete opposite thing. Here were people from all different ethnic backgrounds surrounding Cornelius who actually encouraged and continued to praise him. And I felt so proud when I watched him put that chalk on his hand and go back to lifting. But then here's the really cool thing. Cornelius turns around and non-verbally says, and I'm thinking, oh no, 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 no. I don't know if I, as a guy, especially a non-athletic guy, especially as a gay guy, has ever been invited by a group of men to do something that uber-masculine and alpha and athletic. And I couldn't let my little brother down because that was a teaching moment. So I went and I lifted it and immediately I felt the strain in my legs and I could only do about three shugs. 
And I put it down and I said, that's a little too much for me. To which the response is, that's okay. Everyone else has been working on their trapezoids. This is your first time. I share this because for me right now, that is the image of heaven. When we talk about the kingdom of God and we talk about spirituality and Christianity at its best, shouldn't our faith be a place in which everyone is celebrated, everyone is encouraged, everyone is given the ability to fail, everyone is seen as having their own unique gifts, and if you're not able to do those unique gifts, well, you move on to the next unique gifts, or you have a group of people who are willing to pat you on your back, or get tape, or put chalk on, or say, we'll just get some sandpaper and sandpaper that down. The complete opposite of being forsaken is watching a group of people say, we're going to surround you, and we're going to cheer you on no matter what. And I think one of the unfortunate realities of organized religion is how often has Scripture and faith and the church been used as a measuring rod to decide if you're good or bad, if you're in or out, if you're a citizen of heaven, or if you're doomed to be a prisoner of hell. So this Scripture we just heard about do not forsake us, O Lord, and to be a sanctuary means that it was written by someone who knew what it was like to be excluded. You don't write, deliver me, Lord, and do not abandon me, unless if that's what you're actually feeling at that moment. We know, because we've studied the whole Bible over the year, there's a good chance that this person was in exile. It's possible that this is a person who had been kidnapped by the Babylonians and taken 500 miles away to live for 50 years in a place surrounded by a culture that did not look like them, worship the same way, and look down upon them as if they were dogs and different. We recently and currently have been going through our own exile, aren't we? This whole COVID thing, this whole Black Lives Matter, this whole either you're a Republican who is called a negative name or a Democrat who is called a negative name, we are like constantly being surrounded by adversity and separation and measuring sticks and pointing fingers and a sense of are we in, are we out, are we here, are we not? How many more weeks, how many more months do we still have another year of going through COVID? So it is so easy right now to feel forsaken. It is so easy to feel that God is not aware. It is so easy to feel that God has abandoned us. It is so easy to feel that even though we're here, this is not the sanctuary we once knew. So how do we deal with this? How do we deal with this complex notion that there are people in the world who feel that God has forsaken them or that they are not worthy enough? I think one of the things we do is we continue to hold on to the teachings of Jesus Christ. We continue to remember that our Lord and Savior is someone who welcomed people regardless what they did for a living, regardless where they were in their life. That Jesus was someone who forgave people if they were simply human beings who didn't know better, but he held accountable those in powers of position who did know better. He was someone who thought he had a message to one group of people, and when he disrespected someone and was called on it, he acknowledged it, he learned, and he moved on, and he became better. But he was someone who was always about kindness, justice, humility, 
And hey, let us sit at this table, let us break bread, let us tell stories, and let us remember how good God is. So as I wrap up today's message, what I'd like to say is if you are feeling like you are forsaken, or if you are feeling like God is no longer your sanctuary, do not feel ashamed. Do not feel like you can't be here. Because we will find our own way to surround you, to rub you on your back, to take sandpaper, to make things holdable, to wrap tape, or to put chalk on your hands. And to also encourage you that as you continue your own faith journey and you continue to work your own faith muscles, that when you see those people who are struggling, you see those people who feel forsaken, you see those people who say, well, I don't believe in God anymore or the church just hurts me. I hope that you find your own way that instead of shaming them or judging them, you can find a way to say, well, let me give you some tape. Let me give you some chalk. Let me give you some sandpaper. If anything else, let me just rub your back and let you know that you are okay as you are. I mean, after all, isn't that what the gospel message is all about? And when we think about the concept of Sabbath and we think about the creation of the garden, doesn't it all boil down to that what God has wanted and what God has always wanted was for us to be present, to walk beside God, and to find the ability to rest and to breathe and not be so focused on perfection or tasks or chores. Because when we do that, we then find our own way to not only forgive others, but to also forgive ourselves mm -hmm. and to find a way to lift up that weight mm -hmm. even when we think it was first impossible to do. Mm -hmm. And for that, I believe we can say, Amen. Amen. I want to give thanks for whoever selected that scripture. <laughs> I think it is a beautiful scripture. And I hope for the next week we can all think about the ways in which God has not forsaken us and all the ways in which God is not only our sanctuary, but we as Emmanuel United Church of Christ are called to be a sanctuary seven days a week, even if the building's not open, even if the fellowship hall is not available. There are still so many ways to provide Sabbath sanctuary and safety Amen. let us now enter into a time of silent prayer holy one Sometimes we search for you and we don't see you. We look to the horizon and we wonder where you are. And then sometimes we just need a reminder that you are never further away than our own breath. And that even if we feel like we are completely alone, you and your spirit and your son dwell within us. We call upon you today to be with the family of Doris Carmichael during their time of grief. We also ask, Holy One, that you continue to be with Dottie, that you continue to be with Kurt and Shirley, that you continue to provide comfort and support to David's niece and Michael's daughter. And we ask, Holy One, that you be with our beloved Ruthie, that you touch her with your healing grace and love and surround her with a sense of calm and presence. Amen. And we also ask, Holy One, that you be with me as I go on my vacation, 
that the way before me is safe and the time ahead is one of rest and rejuvenation. And in the words of your Son, Jesus Christ, we unite as one to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. you Lord all your mercy never failed me all my days I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh, I will sing of the goodness of God mm. All my life you have been faithful mm. All my life you have been so so good yes. with every breath that I am able and I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in the darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father and I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God. Yes, all my life you have been faithful. Mm -hmm. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. I will sing of the goodness of God. Mm, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Yeah. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Yes. Your goodness is running My life laid down, I surrender all, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, oh, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender all, I give you everything. Your goodness Faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Yes, I will sing 
of the goodness of God. So um, I have kind of an interesting phenomenon to tell you about today. It has historically for Emmanuel during the summer months to struggle a little bit financially. You know, the, the size of our congregation is smaller than in the winter months. With the COVID, it's we have more viewers from at home and across the world. And I know that uh, we've been a little silly for a couple of weeks. Um, and if silly helps and keeps this going, <laughs> there's a challenge in the works I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm working on now. Uh, but, but we took in what we budgeted and what we had hoped. And so your generosity and deeping a little, digging a little deeper into your pockets, he has, for the first time in forever that we can remember, that for the month of July, from a contribution standpoint, we hit budget and we spent a little less. And so, for that, I say amen and thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. So, um, it just, I think, shows what we can do when we show up and, and do what God asks us to do. So, um, offering-wise and budget-wise, uh, that's a wonderful message to share. Now, I said that we were working already on next year's budget, et cetera, and so we are getting ready to kick off a, a new pledging campaign. So we're going to be working and, and uh, giving out uh, a pledge message and some cards in just the next couple of weeks. So you, I would encourage you to start thinking and praying and considering what 2021 uh, will look like for um, a, a commitment from you to Emmanuel. So that's just out there to start thinking about. Now, today, I have to say, uh, it is so wonderful, Randy, when you are here, because things just magically happen. So he was up early this morning, and he picked those beautiful Florida avocados mm -hmm. that are out in the narthex. And um, if you ask Steve, he might share his guacamole recipe with you uh, because it's really good. And those avocados are perfect for guacamole. Yes. yes. And so uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to share. Now, next uh, week, second Sunday in September, soup and sandwich. So I've just heard a little bird whispering in my ear that at least for the soup part, there's going to be a lot of vegetables. Amen. Yes, Amen. yes. And if a good vegetable soup isn't enough, there's going to be an Alfredo-based oh something with it so that it will be truly a treat. So bring your extra 20s next week <laughs> so that you can throw them in the free will offering for your soup and your sandwich. So that's something that we have to look forward to. So thank you again. I hope that we can keep up this incredible spirit of giving uh, here at Emmanuel because it is 
uh, truly a gift. Thank you. Emmanuel, United Church of Christ, we believe in an open table, which means no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are invited to share in this meal. What that also means is that we are invited to be right here, right now. Whatever happened in the past is in the past. Whatever is yet to be is yet to be. And we are each here in this moment together as complete and total equals. And if you remember from last week, we had that story about the couple walking on the road to Emmaus as night begins to fall with sadness in their heart, feeling completely forsaken and lost. They are journeying down a path in which a man meets them, they share scripture and story. They invite the stranger into their home. And the moment that man takes the bread and breaks it, they realize it is the resurrected Christ. And they reflect on how their hearts were burning with joy. May our hearts be able to do the same today. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul wrote to one of the earliest churches when he said, For I have received from the Lord what I now pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was to be betrayed, he took a loaf of bread. And after giving thanks to God, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And he was so filled with excitement, he spilt all over the place. <laughs> because life is like that, isn't it? Life can be messy, and life can be overflowing. And he said to them, this cup, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink from it. For every time we eat the bread and we drink from the cup, we are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. And now, at this time, you are all invited to take out your communion kit, to open it up, 
What a wonderful sound that is. And then we're all going to take our hands, place it over the elements, and we're going to consecrate it together. Gracious and Holy One, we ask that Your Holy Spirit descend upon us and consecrate this bread and this fruit of the vine. Allow it to be for us a sign of Your grace and mercy. And may it not only unite us in You, but unite us in one another no matter where we are. In Christ's name we pray and we say, Amen. Amen. One of the suggestions we have received from someone who is watching us from far away is that we take a little bit more time between the elements for those who like to pray after they eat or drink. So I invite you to do the same thing. It is through the broken bread that we participate in the body of Christ. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ which has been broken just for you. It is through the cup of the new covenant, overflowing with the Lord's mercy and grace, that we participate in the gift of eternal life. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ which has been shed just for you. shared in heaven's meal let us join together in our words of gratitude thank you for this sacred meal in this time of uncertainty we are united by your holy spirit strengthen our faith increase our love for one another through jesus christ our savior amen amen we have now come to the end of our Stump the Pastor Sunday worship service. Thank you everyone for participating and making this be a safe place. We want to remind everyone that starting tonight, I will be on my vacation. Next Sunday, Reverend Larry Moore from IMAD and Drug Free Highlands will be here to preach. He always has a great message you are certainly going to feel the Holy Spirit with Him. And I also want to say, sometime this week, you will come across a weight that is going to feel too heavy and too impossible to do. When you come across that heavy weight this week, I invite you to call upon the Lord and say, Okay, God, I know you're not going to forsake me. Can you please either give me tape, give me chalk, or may you be able to sand this down so I can carry this. And when you do that, you will also hopefully feel the loving arms of Christ rubbing you on your back and saying, I got you. We are in this together. May you please all rise. And let us extend our hands as we prepare to leave this holy space and to leave this holy time. May we go out into God's beautiful creation, knowing that it is overflowing with so much goodness. If we just rest and take the time to see. And with that knowledge, may we each find our own way to do justice. Let us love being kind to one another, and let us humbly and faithfully walk with our Lord and Creator. Amen. 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 And amen. Every time I feel the Spirit moving to my heart, I will pray. Yes, every 
Every time I feel the Spirit moving to my heart, I will pray up on the mountain. My God is born. Our mother must get far and small. Look all upon me, look and find. I ask my God it heal with my Every time I feel the Spirit moving to my heart, I feel the Spirit moving to my heart. Ah, we pray on oh, the river, child is cold, a shield soul body, no, not so. There's only one train on this track, it's wrong to have and drive right back. Every time I feel the Spirit moving to my heart. We pray just every time I feel the Spirit moving to my heart. I will pray, I will pray, I will pray, I will pray.